somewhere out here in the middle of Oregon making a beeline for the Pacific Northwest in search of a good winter storm. I think there's a pretty good chance we found it. going to find a spot to hunker down here in this little town of Burns out here in Central Oregon for the night because it is late. Rolling in here, it's uh, 4.45 in the morning. Been hitting it pretty hard and that last little bit just kind of took it out of me. So find a spot around here to crash, call it good for the night. Okay, so I'm out here in Central Oregon. Got off on this National Forest Service Road up into the mountains. I'm deep enough in snow to where I'm pushing snow with my bumper. I've got the Atlas transfer case switched into low range four wheel drive. I've got the rear locker engaged and right now my tires are just spinning. We're gonna try lowering the air pressure down to about 10, maybe eight PSI. Okay, that there is about eight PSI. I'm gonna do that to all four tires and see what kind of difference that makes here in this deep snow. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're going as low as eight PSI, the only times you'd wanna do this is in extremely deep snow or in extremely deep sand and going at very low speeds because at this point we're entering the range where it could be very easy to pop off a bead we've tried four wheel drive we've tried the locker we've tried airing down to eight psi it is a clearance issue because we've got snow packing up underneath the running gear and the tires just aren't able to get traction so we're officially stuck so at this point, I'm gonna get the traction boards down off the roof rack. We're gonna place them on all four tires, see if we can't get ourselves some momentum up out of this hole here. Going this low in PSI, we lose a lot of ground clearance because the tires probably squat anywhere from an inch to two inches. Well, I've come across a bit of a situation here in the road. 
Looks like a tree has fallen, perhaps fairly recently, because there are tracks in the snow that go beyond it. I'm not going to go through the trouble of getting out the chainsaw and all the winch gear to clear this trail. I'm not 100% sure what's ahead. If there was a camp spot that I knew of that I wanted to get to, I'd get everything out and go through the trouble. But I'm going to take this as a sign that this is the time to turn around. I'm going to backtrack it down the hill just a ways, find a good spot to set up camp, and just kick back and enjoy some van life in this really cool forest as the snow comes down all around. I've got the van parked here off the side of the road in a safe spot. I moved it away from the trees just because of the amount of tree fall happening and snow falling off the trees, etc. So this should be a cozy little spot for the evening. It sure is beautiful out here in this winter wonderland. I'm gonna go inside and hunker down and just enjoy some winter van life, living the van lifestyle. Truth be told, I am completely unprepared for this snow right now. I have zero of my winter gear. It's all stored up in Northwest Washington. I've been on a crazy schedule. I spent a couple weeks out in New Mexico shooting some content. And then I also jumped on over to Death Valley. Did some very cool off-roading in the sprinter vans out there. Saw some very cool terrain. And then I've been on a beeline up to the Pacific Northwest to capture some of this winter storm content. And I just haven't made it to my snow gear yet, but it was just too good of an opportunity to pass up, so here we are. The van is also a complete disaster after spending so many hours on the road and hours on the trail. So I'm gonna do a little bit of house cleaning before we hunker down and enjoy some of this van life way up here in this winter wonderland. I've been trying out a new diesel heater here inside the Sprinter van. It's made by a company called Autoterm and they make diesel air heaters they sent me one out to try out here in the Sprinter van, so I'm excited to see how that works. One of the great things about this new system is the fact that it has a thermostat option, which means it will turn on and shut off depending on the temperature that you set here. Using that in the last month or so, it's been very, very handy. At night, it turns on automatically, keeps me warm throughout the night, but then during the day, it just kind of shuts itself off, so I don't have to worry about it. It's kind of cool. These things are freaking soaked. Definitely not snow pants. Hello. Battery medium.
Well, I was able to get some chores done around the van and it feels much better. There's nothing like being in a tiny space and having chaos and clutter everywhere. So I got that a little bit under control. Now I can just kick back and enjoy my tea. And I think the snow outside perhaps has stopped falling for the time being, but still freaking crazy how deep it is out there. I do have some work to do on the computer, so I'm gonna hop to that, get some work done. This really works out being such a perfect spot to sit down and do my editing. I'll tell you what, hard drives upon hard drives upon hard drives. This is how all the footage gets stored right here on these hard drives, SSDs. We've got two terabyte, four terabyte, two terabyte, two terabyte, another two, another two, a two, a four, and a two. That's a lot of terabytes of footage all right here. This is all how the workings happen. So you guys wondered why the Arctic series took so long to get produced and put out. These are all the hard drives that actually store the Arctic series. Over 12 terabytes of footage that came out of that trip. To go through and process all that and edit it all, it was quite the chore. I just gotta get plugged into a hub so that I can work on it here on my laptop. So here's my laptop set up. Got my mouse here, of course. All the hard drives plugged in here. Works out pretty well. Bam! I think this video is complete. I'm ready for an export and an upload to YouTube. Perfect. Well, with the chores done, the video complete, I'd say it's probably time for some chow. Got some leftovers in the fridge that I cooked up the other day. I'm just gonna warm those up here in the Instant Pot, make it quick and easy. Tell you what, this old Instant Pot has been through the ringer. It rides in the back of the Sprinter and bounces through all the trails and all the roads, but it still works, even though it looks beat up as heck. It's not sponsored. This is not sponsored. It's just something that I like to carry in my van because it's useful. I'm gonna put just a little bit of water down in there. Got this trivet, goes right down in the bottom. I'm gonna put my leftovers in one of these pans. I made a bit of a soup actually here in the Instant Pot here just a few days ago and it's going to make for some great leftovers. I like to store my leftovers in Ziploc bags like this because it's easy to store it in the fridge. It doesn't take up a lot of room. But then also that's one less dirty dish that I need to worry about cleaning up. So we're gonna put it on steam mode and sure, 15 minutes will work. And now it just starts doing its thing. Okay, let's do a quick little snow check here outside. A little bit of a temperature check here.
Yeah. Dinner is served. This is a recipe that I just threw together. Had some ideas of some ingredients, how I'd like to cook it. It actually turned out pretty good. It's got hominy in there, it's got chicken, mushrooms, it's got some New Mexico green chili, it's got some chicken broth and bouillon as a base. Makes a little bit of a pasole style soup, etc. Hmm. Oh man. Everything's always so much better as leftovers, especially when you're way up here in the mountains, deep in the snow, living some winter van life. The temperature here inside the van is sitting at a comfortable 65 degrees, thanks to the auto term diesel heater. Meanwhile, outside, temperatures are dropping just below 25 degrees. Even better than what it was the other day. So perfect. Also, a little bit of a pro tip when you're using the Instant Pot with the pot and pot steamers, the hot water that you use at the bottom to steam your leftovers, keep it warm in the Instant Pot and then you can use it to rinse out this dish and then dishes are done quick and simple. Let's do one more final snow check before jumping into bed. Looks like it's coming down pretty good out there actually. Do a temperature check. Looks like about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Hell yeah. Love me some winter wonderland out here living some van life. Alright, I'm letting all the cold air in and the heat out. Let's close this door and get ready for some bedtime. Well, with it being a cool and crisp 25 degrees outside, here inside the Sprinter van, it is a comfortable 65 degrees as it maintains here through the evening. Got the next Live in the Van Life episode uploading. Love being able to work remotely with my Starlink here in the van. all this time I've been spending in the desert I've been craving some good old spaghetti westerns I figured I'd put one on here for bedtime it's always nice to go to sleep with some sort of entertainment on especially way out here in the remote wilderness it makes things feel a little bit more cozy nothing like a good old spaghetti western <laughs> Silverado. Alright. I'm going to make myself a sweet drink and get ready for bed. Don't you even want to count it? No, friend. We trust you. And swing. 
bad luck. Bad luck for me. Well guys, I think that about wraps up this episode of Living the Van Life. Had a wonderful night camping out here in some deep, deep snow way out here in Central Oregon. But I think it's time to move on and go find the next winter van life adventure that is probably lying just around the corner because this place is chock full of winter storm warnings. So I'm going to go hit the road in search of the next Living the Van Life adventure. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. Keep on trucking.